accordance with the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 30. Wise man Daniel moves through the congregation of the synagogue church of all nations under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit. The real, authentic and forceful power of God manifests in the life of the wise man as his action is replaced by God's action, his ability by God's ability and his strength by God's strength. The result is awesome to behold. People fall, twist, turn, and shout as their body reacts to the unapproachable light of God's purity and the fire of His holiness, which dispels every shade of darkness from the congregation with just a touch from the man of God. As wise man Daniel ministered deliverance, he discovered the forces of darkness hiding in this lady's life, which, unchecked, had been tormenting her for years, and challenged them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us watch the encounter. Fire the mighty of Jesus Christ. All over your body. Fire the mighty of Jesus Christ. Fire. Right now, speak where you. I'm her husband. What have you done to her career? Everything is bad. What are the things that are bad? What have you done to her career as a woman? Oh, friends, I'm singing and successful. She's nothing. Huh? People before her have come and passed her. Last, they use her. Who used her? Men. Who made men to use her? I did. How did you go about it? Every time they meet her, they want to help her and make them hate her. Okay, give instances of occasions where you have made men to hate her. She can sing very well. But every time I sleep with her, then they don't want to help her career. And she's crying and she's depressed. She's depressed. She wants to die. Don't take her away from me. What are the things you have done to her career? Made people not help her. I blind them. They can't see her. They like her, but they can't help her. Because if she gets some money, then she can't need me again. Okay, you don't want to lose her. Yes. And that is why you make men to use her, dump her. Because if she sees she'll be a star and she'll get money. Okay. Then she doesn't need to sleep with no one okay you mean if, if you allow her to sing she's a big star yes. and for that reason yes. you want to destroy her. what are the things you have made her to be doing drugs drugs uh -huh. smoking and smoking drinking and drinking piercing her whole body uh -huh. see her ring mm -hmm. She okay. Said, she knows it's there. Or she can feel it. You said you make her to take drugs. Yes. How do you go about it? How do you how do you induce her to take drugs? Explain. She just started taking drugs because she saw a guy take it. A guy. He's very very big guy. Who connected her to the person? I did. You connected her to the person. Yes. Who made her to be taking drugs? I did. What kind of drug does she take? Marijuana. Marijuana. Cocaine. Cocaine. Crack. Uh huh. Everything. Every kind of drug. How does she take it? Is it by injection or by smoking or what? She's smoking. She smokes. Uh, she's afraid of needles, so I've tried. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> and when she smokes these drugs or takes these drugs, what do you make her to do afterwards? She's just high. She can't do anything. She can advise people, but she can't help herself. She's just there, just useless and lazy. She planned and planned very well. And then 
She don't do anything. <laughs> Who made her to be useless and lazy? <laughs> me. You. Why do you do it? Why? <laughs> She's very strong. Strong in what way? And I love her. She's very strong in what way? <laughs> very influential girl. Oh, you don't know her. Everybody loves her. And you don't like that? <laughs> no. Why you don't want people to love her? Why? <laughs> because I want her to be with me. Can't you see the way she's looking? You just want her to be with you alone? Yeah. Okay, what have you done to her marital life? <laughs> Nobody wants to marry her. Is it because she's not beautiful or what? No, she's very beautiful. Can't you see? Oh, okay. She can do everything. Oh, she can write. She can play instruments. She can sing. She can cook. She can do everything. They come. They almost, almost want to marry her. They've even gone to buy a ring before, but you think I'm stupid? I didn't allow it. Ten or twenty times that she doesn't give up. She still wants to be loving. Okay, give instances. She says she wants to love. Why? Okay, okay, give instances of the one that really hurts her, which you demon cost. You wicked spiritual husband cost her. There's this guy that she loves. Uh huh. <laughs> He wanted to marry her last year. Uh -huh. And then one of her friends that she goes who's spiritualist because because the guy has a baby mama. Has what? Baby mother. Uh -huh. So she thought she was going to pray. Oh. <laughs> Next thing he just left and he doesn't even call her again. Our best friend, no, oh, they were like this more than seven years. Now he doesn't talk to her again. He wants to marry her. Okay. And then I destroy everything. You destroyed the relationship. Yes. And the man has left her. Yes. She's still sad. How do you feel when she this hurts her? Nobody loves her, not her mother, not her family. Nobody wants to show her real love. So she's sad and I want her to die. Come How do you feel when you cause her disappointment? How do you feel? I'm happy because now she wants to die. And when she dies, then her soul will come to me. That's what you want? Yes. Okay, what other serious disappointment do you cause her? She doesn't talk to her mother. Oh. Why she doesn't talk to her mother? She said her mother gave her away, so she doesn't like her at all. Who caused the enmity between her and her mother? Ancestral curses. It's from the house. It's from the house. Okay, you say you make her to take drugs? You make her to take marijuana? Cocaine? And the rest. Uh -huh. She smokes and drinks. Uh -huh. How did you link her up with all this? Yeah. Can you imagine this girl? Went to stop taking drugs. I said, wait. <laughs> she went to pray somewhere, I don't know where. Stop taking drugs for some time, oh, and I made her to smoke marijuana. And she's been fighting me since. So I stop. I'm back. I'm stop. I'm back. I'm drinking. I'm clapping. Why can't she just stay? You people leave her now. <laughs> Anytime she takes the drugs, how do you make her to feel? She thinks she feels good. But that's when I talk to her. That's when you talk to her? Mm -hmm. To do what? Just watching stuff going out calling people she sees a guy she just like him and it's no stress just sleep okay so you said she's a singer mm -hmm. a popular one mm -hmm. what have you done to her musical career she's stagnant stagnant who made her stagnant Let me see. can you explain how you did it does it mean that she has nobody to promote her musical career or what people are there they come they come, uh -huh. they help her a little, just a taste, and then they go. Does it mean she cannot sing well People or what? People that she teaches how to sing are now stars 
in her country and she's just there. People that she taught her to sing? Yes. As stars? Yes. Yes. Does it mean that she herself cannot sing or what? She can sing too well. She, have you heard her singing? <laughs> That's why I love her. Okay, you love her because she can sing very well. Just one place. She's just there. She's just one Instead place. Instead of recording and putting her music out, she will go to the studio all day, all night, recording and recording, and she keep the music on her phone <laughs> and listen to it by herself. She's funny. <laughs> what do you want from me? How are you? I'm fine. Who are you to her? She's just a friend. I brought her here. Okay. Yeah. So I know her very well. She's a good musician. I know her in Ghana for the past of her eight years. She won Ghana Music Award last year. The well known in Ghana. So I know her very well. She did She's well known in Ghana. Very, very well known. Oh, and right now she has an album, just came out. So I called her last five days ago. So I spoke to her about coming to synagogue. She told me a problem, like uh, she's frustrated, she wants to die. She knows she's married, she has a ring in her hand, she can feel it, she can't sleep at night. So I invited her, so I spoke to her one-on-one. -on -one. I said, don't worry, I'll bring you to synagogue. She said she don't have money. I said, you don't have money? I said, okay, no problem. If you don't have money, I'll bring you to synagogue myself. So that's how I brought her. She has so many projects in hand that failed. So many projects, she'll be crying, complaining to me that she wants to kill herself, stuff like that. I said, no, you don't have to kill yourself. She said, if you come to synagogue today, if you didn't see the man of God, they didn't deliver her, she's going to kill herself. I said, oh, by all means, they're going to deliver you today. That is Denise, she's a popular singer. She was even in uh, MT MTN, um, a famous film. That just, uh, she was in the house, but she failed. She, uh, she, so many, she, she's well known in Ghana, actually. She do music, she, 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 she had a like, group one, Vodafone Music Award last year in Ghana. I know she smoke, she drink, she hang out most time. What are the hindrances you have noticed in her life as a professional singer? Every time she go up, she come down. Failure, failure, failure. Anytime I see her complaining to me about things not work out well for her. Is it that she's not a good singer or what? What, what are they? She's a very good singer. For what she told me, she said that her mother married to seven husbands, seven children, seven brothers. She's a little girl in her family. So things are not working. She, she, she says she, she has a ring in her hand that she can feel the ring. So I'm like, why? She says she can feel the ring. So I invite her to my house. I own Emmanuel TV in my parlor. I put her in my chair to sleep so she can be able to watch Emmanuel TV. The way she slept that night, she said, ah, I'm okay now. At this night, I will not, I'm not attack. I don't sleep and wake up three times or four times in the night. So I'm, I sleep like a baby. You demon. What's the meaning of the tattoo on her hand? They say it means music. That's what she says. Oh. <laughs> okay, what else again have you done to her career as a lady? I will show her and make her hopeless and sad and depressed. Up and down and up and down. She will not get there. <laughs> Were you not aware that she was coming here? I tried to stop it, so. How did you try to stop it, how? I didn't want to give her any money. I was making her tired. She got angry with the guy that was bringing her here. But she's stubborn because she's also praying and praying and praying and praying. She knows I'm there. She knows I'm there and I've been fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. But she wants to be praying and praying and praying. Oh. Why you demon don't want her to come into this place? <laughs> because she will go. Okay, because you know she'll be free. Huh? Yeah. So, so what is here that you don't, you don't like? The Holy Spirit. And you're against the Holy Spirit? Yes. Which kingdom do you belong to? The one that kills and destroys. Also it's time you divorce. demon leave this body and let there be peace. Fight all of everybody. Fight the mighty of Jesus. Fight the mighty of Jesus Christ. Come out of her, you demon! You're a musician by profession. You wicked spiritual husband. Come out of her! The mighty of Jesus. Out! The mighty of Jesus Christ! No! Come out! Come out! The mighty of Jesus, you're going. A woman! Take it! Take it! Take it over! 
Uh, remove it. Remove the ring by yourself. Ah, Use your hands to remove it. Remove it. Ah, remove it. Ah, remove it. Ah, the of Jesus. Remove ah, the ring. Ah, remove it. Ah, remove it. Ah, Take all that belongs to you and leave this body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, Come out, in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going. Ah, out. In Jesus' name. Il a été déclaré libre de son mère spirituel qui a détruit sa vie, sa carrière musicale. L'esprit maléfique confessant qu'elle se drogue. In Jesus' name. Prenez la cocaïne. You're free. Rise up. La marijuana. Ceci a complètement détruit sa vie, mais elle a été déclarée libre dans le nom de Jésus Christ. How are you? I'm okay. Why is everybody looking at me? Why is everybody looking at me? Uh, you are in the church. I know. But what made you to fall down? What happened to you? I don't know. You don't know what happened to you? No. Maybe someone pushed you down. Maybe. What fell you down? I don't know. I was standing here and then I was, I was about to talk to you and I started shaking. That's all I remember. That's all you remember? Yes. <sighs> You said you are her spiritual husband and you are out to destroy her musical career. You. I knew there was someone there, but did they tell you something? You said many things. I'm going to remind you some of the things you said. You said you are her spiritual husband and you are out to terminate her musical career. You. But I'm not a man. How can I marry myself? You said so just now. No, no, I don't remember. What do you do for a living? I sing. You sing? Yeah. What can you say about your musical career? What are the hindrances you've been facing? Oh, <laughs> so many. I've been singing for a very, very long time. Even teaching people how to sing and all, all those people. They're just up there and then they look at me and they laugh at me. That demon has been tormenting your musical career is out, okay? Thank you. Okay, can you just sing and let's hear you? Thank you, Father, for healing me. Holy Spirit, falling on me. I can't believe I'm finally free. Thank you, Father, for healing me. We rejoice with you and we thank God at last that demon that has been tormenting your musical career is out. So thank you can you. live your life to please Jesus. Thank you. You're free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Emmanuel. And he will remain with you. My name is Denise Williams. I'm 28 years old. <clears throat> My mother is a drug addict and alcoholic. My father, I never knew him. Not because he was a deadbeat dad, but because my mother was very promiscuous. So when I was two months years old, my mother gave me away to my auntie, who couldn't have children at the time. She took me away to America, where she raised me as her child. After some time, God blessed her, or she got pregnant mysteriously, and she began to abuse me. For those of you who know America very well, you know that they frown upon that. So child services came, took me away, and locked her up. <sighs> she got bail. When she finally got bail, my family began to hate me. That is when my childhood just became a disaster because my family was saying that I had brought shame and disgrace onto them. Um, I've, locked up, I've locked up my grandmother's favorite daughter, so they were treating me terribly. That's when they derived the plan to trick me and send me away. They told me I'll be going to see my favorite uncle. I'll be with my favorite uncle in Chicago until the tension cooled down. So I was excited because, you know, like I said, that's my favorite uncle. They packed my stuff and they took me to the airport. When I got to the airport, by this time I was about 12 years old. I was 12 and a half actually. And my auntie told me that she's sending me, uh, you, have, you guys have to know that I thought she was my mother. She didn't tell me that I had another mother anywhere else. She raised me as her own. So she now told me that um, 
She's sending me to my mother. And then she slapped me. So I started crying. Now, I don't know. I, at the time, I hadn't really heard what she said very well. So I was kind of confused, and I got on the flight. When I was sitting on the flight, because of my continuous tears, a flight hostess came to me, and she asked me what the problem was. I told her, oh, my mother just slapped me. And she saw there was a tag hanging on my neck because that's the normal procedure if a, if a minor is traveling on their own. She, pick, she, picked this, she took this tag off my neck, reached into it, and she said, okay, so you're going to Brussels. I had no idea where that was, by the way. So I told her, no, I'm going to Chicago to see my uncle. And then she's like, no, this flight is going to Europe. In fact, after that, it's going to Freetown. And I was like, I was so confused. I didn't really know what was going on because I've never traveled on my own before. So she told me she would help me as much as she could. We land in Brussels. We land in Brussels. She took me to a waiting room because I was in transit for such a long time. She fed me. I think the Holy Spirit told her to. She fed me and she kept me safe until it was time for me to board my next flight. She took me to the state, I mean, to, 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 to the, the, um, the point where I could get on the next flight to Freetown. I got on the flight, I was still confused because I was trying to remember what my mother had told me. She's sending me to my mother. I'm just, you know, crying and confused and maybe I didn't hear her very well and why am I not in Chicago or whatever it may be. I get to Freetown. Before the flight could land, there was an announcement on the loudspeaker that um, I'm sorry, but we won't be able to move on to Liberia because there's a war going on there. <clears throat> So we're gonna, we're, gonna put, we're gonna take you guys to a hotel nearby, and then whenever there's a ceasefire, then we'll be able to move on to the next destination. So I get to the hotel. When I got to the hotel, I saw everyone, I watched everyone as they checked into various rooms, and I was the last one sitting there because I didn't know what to do. I'm sitting there, and then the receptionist comes to me, and she's like, um, what's going on? Are you traveling alone? Because I see this tag on you. I was like, yes, I'm traveling alone. She's like, um, so what are you going to do now? I said, I don't know. I'm just going to sit here because I don't have a room or anything. These people, God touched their heart and they gave me a room. They sheltered me and they fed me for two weeks. Within the two weeks, I mean, just before we could get to the third week, they said there was a ceasefire in Liberia and that flights were now landing in that country. So the, the receptionist now put me, took me to the airport with the rest of these people that were going to Liberia, and I'm standing on the line waiting to get on the flight. I'm standing on the line waiting to get on the flight. I was so sad because, like I said, as a normal young child traveling by yourself and you just left your family and you're all alone, you're scared, you're panicking, you're depressed, you don't know, so you keep crying. I was constantly crying. Again, the Holy Spirit sent another person into my life. A lady asked me why I was crying, and I told her, well, you know, I've been traveling, and there's just so many things going on. I'm going to Liberia, and I know nothing about Liberia. She was like, okay, what part of America where are you coming from? And I was like, I'm from New York. And she was like, oh, what part of New York? And I say Staten Island. She's like, oh, okay, I used to live in Staten Island. Which part of Staten Island? I told her. She now told me that she was friends to my grandmother, so she would aid me. She would be with me until we got to Liberia. So I sat next to her. She was consoling me and everything. We get to Liberia because there was a lady that used to always come and visit my mother, which was her best friend. Her name was Gloria Menger, and she was the only person I knew about, like, that came from Africa. So I told her, I'm going to this lady, because that's the only familiar name that I knew. When I told her about the lady. This lady was, this woman that God had introduced me to was also a very big person in that government that was about to fall. So they all knew themselves because this Gloria lady worked at one of the biggest banks in Liberia. So they knew themselves. So she was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take care of you until I can put you in the hands of Gloria. I was like, fine. As soon as we landed in Liberia and we got to this lady's house, the war started again. There was nothing I could do. I was ducking and hiding. It was crazy. People were dying. I could, you could actually see dead bodies swollen on the streets. It's, it's not something that anyone here would want to see. You know, as a young person, I, I was just, I didn't know what was going on. I was just so confused. So when we finally found Gloria, which was a month later, when she, I was deposited into her hand, she now sat me down and explained that she was told to take me to my mother. So I tried to ask her what she meant by that. And she was like, yeah, your biological mother. But the problem here is we can't find her because she's not normally at the same place for a long period of time because she was on hard drugs, as in cocaine, crack, alcohol, 
all these things. So you have to look for her in ghettos. You see, it took some time. Now, you see, during the war, every little bit that you have counts. So Gloria started getting tired of me because I was another mouth for her to feed. You know, she started getting anxious. And she went to the closest person that she knew that my mom would pop into that house any other time, which was my mother's older sister. We get to my mom's older sister's house. My little, my cousins, my new cousins started wearing my stuff from the States. I wasn't really paying attention to it. I was there for months and months out. They could not find my mother. Finally, I'm sitting there one day having lunch, and they tell me that, they finally found my mother. She's outside. I was just tired of all this put, putting me here, putting me here, putting me here, that I went out. I was like, okay, fine. This is a sign of relief. I'm going to see the woman that, okay, gave birth to me. This is my, my traveling stops here. This is my last, my last bus stop, as we say, in, in, in Ghana. I get outside. I pass by my mother because I would never expect that this woman gave birth to me. She was dirty, she was smelly, she was holding a child. I mean, she looked like someone I would not even talk to on a normal day. I go to the next cleanest lady that I saw, and I said, are you my mother? And she said, no, she's not. And that's when I heard my name from the back. When this lady called my name from the back, when I turned around, my heart sunk. Congregation, my heart did not sink with a sigh of relief. I was just discouraged. I knew that. That's it for me, you know. Nothing good is about to happen in my life. I walk towards her. She says, it's time for me to go with her. I'm like, okay, you know what? I, I don't have a choice. We pack my stuff. We follow her to where she stayed. She lived with three other men in an unfinished building. The first three days, I'm not going to lie to you, they were heaven. I got mother love that I had missed for months on months, you know. She gave me eggs. She treated me nice. The third day, she sat me down and she said, look, this is not America. You have to grow up now. You're going to become a woman now. I didn't know what she meant at that time. She would leave me in the house for days with these men, with her, little, with her newborn baby. And I would take care of my little brother all the time. And I would ask these people, I'd be crying, where is she? Where is she? They'd be like, don't worry, she's coming back. Suddenly, she got tired. I don't know what the devil talked to her. She decided that she was going to start exploiting me. She started holding my hand and taking me around to offices, people that she knew, grown men in places. This is the time the war has come. It hasn't stopped, but there's a ceasefire. Like I said, you can move around, but you just have to be careful. We get to offices. I don't know what they've discussed behind my back, but I see these men give her money, and she leaves me there. It's by the grace of God that none of them ever did anything to me. They would, she would come back like nothing was wrong. She'd just see me there, and she'd take me away. Through this... One day, she left me with this man, this huge fat man, and then he has no conscience whatsoever. When she left, he called me, come over here, come and sit on my lap. And I was like, no, you know? So he forced me to come and sit on him. When I sat on his lap, he started touching me and I started shouting and shouting and shouting. And then she came and he told her to come back. Not knowing, I thought she had left me, but she was right downstairs. So he used the intercom and told her, come and get your daughter. Haven't you explained everything to her? Doesn't she know I'm supposed to be sleeping with her right now? What's going on? You know? So she comes back and she starts beating me because she's like, I'm, I'm spoiling her money. What is going on? Why don't I want to cooperate? This is not America. And if she beats me, no police is going to arrest her because this is Africa that we're in right now. It's like, okay. So I started fending for myself. Like I was, I was, I was strong now as in I grew up early. This is like I'm 12 and a half going on 13 years old. I have to be a woman now. During this process, when years went by, like let's say about two or three years went by, I met this guy because, you know, like I'm rebellious now. I haven't started doing drugs yet because I will get to that. I'm rebellious now. And anybody I see, I'm just trying to be like, I'm, I'm trying to be a gangster. I want to be like hardcore and whatnot. I get, I meet this man. He's a, he was seven years older than me at the time, but I found comfort in him because we kind of had the similar, we had similar stories. As in, you know, he was also sent from America and whatnot. He was into crack. He was into cocaine. He would, crack and cocaine are two different things, people. He was into crack. He was into cocaine. He was into alcoholism, and he introduced me to this. And because I found comfort and he had a lot of money, and that was my way of getting away from my mother, I embraced it with him. I became his junkie partner. We started smoking and doing drugs and it had never dawned on me anymore that this is the same thing that was destroying my mother because I was looking for refuge. During this time, I would go back to my mother and I asked her, what about my father since I've met you? You understand? Tell me something. She's like, oh, he died when I was six years old, but he's from Ghana. 
That's what she said to me. And I was like, okay, no problem. But I kept doing my drugs. The war started again. And this man fled, left me, gave me money, but he fled from the, from, from the country. And I had to fend for myself and find a way to get out of Liberia during the time of war, where I was ducking and hiding. When I got to Ghana, I was trying to find my family that I didn't know anything about, but I didn't know where to start from. But I was already strung up on cocaine, crack, and alcohol. So all this money, I spent it on that, and I became homeless. I walked on the streets of Ghana. I begged for money. I did stuff for money, as in slept with men for money because I didn't have anything else to do. I, didn't, I couldn't feed myself. I would go from house to house. I would meet you, act like I'm your friend, just to be able to sleep over because no one knew that I was, I, I was homeless at the time. Okay, so during this whole process in which I'm doing all these drugs and I'm living on the street, my music was my comfort because at that time now, it's like I have no friends. So when I'm high, then I begin to sing. And it's, it makes me feel happy. And while I'm in the ghetto, while I'm doing my drugs, when I get high, I sing. People next to me, fellow junkies, would say, oh, you have a nice voice. It never dawned on me that I want to be a musician or anything at the time. And I, I took it into consideration. I was, you know, like, oh, this is nice. They say I have a nice voice. That's good. So walking by one day, on one of my days where I was begging for money on the street, I stumbled upon a pool bar where they said karaoke, live karaoke. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break from drugs tonight and go and sing, you know? Try my voice in front of an audience because people say I can sing. I get to the karaoke bar. The first day I held the mic, the first time I held the, held the mic, the owner of this karaoke bar came downstairs and said, wow, was that you singing? I was like, yes. He was like, please, can you be coming here on Sundays so that I can employ you? Like, you come here, I'll pay you to sing. That was my first job. That was, that was a job that at least I didn't have to sleep with anyone for money. I didn't have to beg anyone for money. I started going to this place. But at that time, I'm still homeless. Years went by. Years went by. Of course, that money was not so much money for me to rent an apartment or whatnot. I was still doing what I had to do to get money on the side. And at that time, I'm not thinking about finding my family anymore because I, feel, I felt like everyone has written me off. If I find this family, will they let me go the same way the ones that deceived me for 12 years let me go? So I decided to be my own friend and just whoever I met, that's my mother or that's my father in the street. Now, during this time, I stumbled upon a, a commercial on TV. They said that there was a music competition called MTM Project Fame. I was like, I'm going to go try it out because when I sing at this karaoke bar, people clap for me. It gave me confidence. So I went to audition. And God so had it that I made my way into the house. I didn't win the competition, but I came seventh, which were, there were five winners. And I didn't win the competition because I think it was the devil that didn't want me to change from one point to the next. So when I got out of the house, to my surprise, you know, I had already made big mouth at the, at the karaoke bar that I was working at. I'm going to Project Fame. I'm going to win. I'm not going to come back here anymore. So it was kind of embarrassing that I had lost, and now I have to go work at that same place because now pride has taken over me. I have to go work at that same place that I claimed that I was better than now. To my surprise, these people called me, and they gave me $2,000 that this is compensation money, that while I was in the house, I entertained them. So I was like, great. I took this money, and I rented an apartment for two years. Just before the two years could finish, during this time, I'm meeting people who claim they want to help me with my music career, but, but first, I should sleep with them. I should sleep with them. I'm trying to be hard, because these are grown old men, you know, you are like older men who have the means of, they should look at me like I'm their daughter. And I refuse to sleep with older men at that time because I didn't have my father, and I didn't know who he was, so I felt like maybe I might sleep with my father one day. You understand? So... I'm being hard about it and everything. So then these guys said, okay, if you're not going to sleep with us or if you're not going to sleep with me for money, then which means you have your means of support. No problem. I had to give in because I wanted to change status. And when I did what they said, no one helped me. No one helped me. So then I realized that I began to have dreams. People coming to me, men, women, old people, sleeping with me in my dreams. I've never experienced anything like this before in my life. 
And it was so real. Sometimes I'm not even asleep. I could be standing up and I feel myself shaking like someone's having sex with me. It was, it was something that I was, it was just different to me. I think someone had possessed me or whatever it may, whatever it may have been. During that same time, I'm praying, God, please, I don't want to do drugs. I already don't have money. And, you, and this is happening to me. I, I, I was still praying. I was still praying, God, please drop manna from the sky. Don't let me do drugs. That's when I stopped doing hard drugs, which was the crack and the cocaine. But I was still doing marijuana and still drinking excessive alcohol because now I had to use that as a substitute for the drugs that I was not taking. As time went by... I found out there was another competition, and I realized that competitions are the only way I would make honest money. So I kept auditioning for different competitions, you know, because I wasn't happy in that way of life I was living. Just before I got here, my life was spiraling down. I had already, last year, I won a competition called Vodafone Icon. It was a group competition, actually, so I was placed in a group, and I was a leader of these two girls. Something came in me and said, leave them alone. They're holding you back. Why don't you just pursue your solo career? And I just left those girls, and those girls have moved on. They're elevating. Great things are happening to them, and I start singing at another karaoke bar again. So I'm not moving forward anymore. I'm just moving backwards. Before I could come here, before the Lord Jesus Christ saved my life and delivered me, I was about to die because this is when I started falling sick. I was having seizures. I was having these nightmares day in and day out. I was having mini heart attacks, and I was falling sick. I even went to the hospital, and they told me I had an early case of spondylosis. What am I doing with my body? I'm too young to have this disease. I'm, I'm too young to have this sickness. So I got suicidal. I attempted suicide more than three or four times, and I wouldn't die because every time I tried, someone would come and find me and save me from it. It was the grace of God, I would just have to say. Just before... I didn't, I'm not someone who watches Emmanuel TV. I'm not going to lie to anyone. I've heard about it, but I never put my time to it. I called a friend of mine, the, one, the, the fellow that you saw on the tape, and I told him, I said, Tom, what's happening to me? Why is my life like this? Everybody says, Denise, you're beautiful. Denise, you can sing. Denise, you have so much talent. But why is my life so stagnant? Why am I not prospering? I don't want to be like this anymore, Tom. I need money. I'm not getting money. He's like, Wow. Do you have wet dreams? He starts asking me these various questions. Do you find yourself rising and falling? And I explained, yes, these are things I have. He said, are you ready to travel? I said, yes. My mind told me that he's taking me to a spiritualist or a juju person or something. So before I could ask him, he was like, I'm not taking you to juju. I'm taking you to God. Just like that. And I was like, well, okay, this is it. If you take me there and nothing happens for my life, I'm coming back, just know I'm leaving this earth because I'm going to die now. I'm sick and tired of living the way I'm living. Rejection is too much for me. He said, no, no problem, don't worry. I said, but Tom, I don't have any money. He said, don't worry, I'm going to take you. So that, I, from the day he told me, for four days straight, I didn't leave his sight. I didn't leave his sight. I was always behind him everywhere he went. We took the trip, we came here. To even come here was no joke. Car almost had an accident. I was getting angry with him for no reason or whatsoever. I almost told him, you know what, go. I don't want to come because the devil did not want me to be delivered. And I didn't even realize that this, was, this church was so blessed and the presence of God was here like this. <laughs> when I got here, they put me on the prayer line. I surrendered my life right there and I said, God, please deliver me. Please use Jesus Christ to heal me. I don't want to remain the same. All those things I did were wrong. I realize and I know that they're wrong. But I don't want to live like this. If you love me, if you have a purpose for me, that you keep keeping me alive even though I've commit, tried to commit suicide, heal me now. Before wise man Daniel could even get closer to me, I felt something moving in my body. And I was just shaking, and I was like, wow, something's happening. Because I felt I never expected the Holy Spirit to, to get into this temple that I've, I've misused. I had thought that God written me off. He had written me off completely. I thought I, wasn't, I didn't deserve to be saved. It was, it was the devil telling me these things. When he, laid his, when he laid his hand upon me, I blacked out, and I just saw what I saw just now. I was confessing so many things. The devil in me was confessing so many things about me. To call a long story short, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm happy. Since I got delivered, it's my joy to read the Bible. At first, when I want to pray, words don't come. I find myself on this altar and I'm praying and I'm praying. I was like, wow, 
God is wonderful. How you do this for me, you save my life. Prophet TB Joshua, daddy. Excuse me, please. Can you help me? Instead of prostituting my body and feeling sorry for myself the way I did and allowing the devil to do what he did to me, which I don't want him to do anymore, please help me, sir. I don't want to go back to that life anymore because I found joy in serving the Lord. It's so much fun. I'm scared to go outside, not because I'm weak, but I'm not ready yet. I still want to remain here and I want to pray and I want to be strong because I'm a baby in Christ right now. I'm a, I'm a baby, you understand? I know that you are a man of God and I know that you can help me. I've given my life to God. Please, please help me. Give me advice. I want, to com I want to continue my music career, but you're the man of God. I pray to God that he speaks through you. You direct me. I'm tired of making my own decisions because they were all wrong. Guide me, please. I need help. Excuse me. Like I said earlier, I'm not crying because I'm, I feel defeated, everyone. I'm crying because these are tears of joy. I'm finally free. Right now, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to say it for people at home who are watching me and you know me. I'm not the same Denise anymore. No more. And you can't get me. You can't trick me. I've given my life to God and no tests or trials or, trip or temptations will ever befall me again. Congregation, if you don't mind, I have a song in, in my heart. And I think that if it's this situation, can I please sing it to you? Ooh, I was just a child when I felt the Savior leading. I was drawn to what I could not understand. For the cause of Christ, I have spent my days believing that what he had me be was who I am as I come to see the weaker side of me I realize his grace is what I need a sin demanded justice for my soul mercy said no I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you slip away You don't have to be afraid Mercy said no Sin will never take control Life and death stood face to face Darkness tried to steal my heart away Thank you Jesus for God so loved the world that he sent his son to save us From the cross he built the bridge to set us free Home but deep within our hearts there's still a war that rages that makes the sacrifice so hard to see as midnight fell on crucifixion day the light of hope seemed all so far away as evil tried to Redemptions flow, mercy said no. Darkness tried to steal my heart away Thank you, Jesus Mercy said no
after her deliverance in the power of Jesus Christ and her request for guidance and help to maintain her new life, Denise stayed some months in the Synagogue Church of All Nations, receiving the Word of God that pointed her to her future success. A few months later, Denise was set to return to Ghana, now full of joy and purpose, and was given the gift of 500,000 Naira by Prophet TB Joshua and Emmanuel TV Partners to start her music career. Hello, my name is Denise Williams and I'm a Liberian, half Ghanaian. I'm a musician from Ghana. Um, I was a part of a group called r and I was the leader. I also have taken part in so many competitions. I'm actually well known in Ghana. The problem that brought me to the Synagogue Church of All Nations was spiritual attacks, addiction to drugs and alcohol, you know, spirit of lust, so many different things I was battling with that I felt like I've tried other solutions and I couldn't overcome them so I decided to come down to where I knew that God was. So can you just tell us briefly in summary uh, how this uh, evil spirit that had uh, possessed you really had affected your entire life and career? Okay as for my career I would you know record so many songs it's like what 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 you would call a neighborhood superstar you know your songs are good your music is good you have the vocals and everything but you can't excel to where you're supposed to be you know you're always stagnant in one position of life i mean just popularity but you're not getting the income that you need and that also led me to talk sleeping with people i was not supposed to sleep with because i was trying to maintain a certain way of lifestyle an elegant lifestyle so it led me into a way of lifestyle as in drugs i'm all in the, i was always in the club you know because the nature of my music made me <laughs> to get used to being in the club i was drinking i was doing drugs um at a certain part in my life this spirit you know caused me to be homeless you know, I used to live on the street at a certain time of my life. I mean, there's just been ups and down, roller coaster of emotions, so many different struggles from one thing to another, nightmares, you know, people, men, women, old people coming to me, sleeping with me in my dream, you know. I'm also facing depression, you know, I was lonely, it was... I t attempted suicide many times, you know, it's just by the grace of God that I'm here today. I've been to so many competitions where I've come out the winner, but after that, I just realized that I get ba I'm, I'm back to square one. You know, it's it was terrible for me because everyone would come up to me, Denise, you're so talented, you know, like, you shouldn't be here right now. This evil spirit battled with me, it wouldn't allow me to excel in life, it was just terrible and I entered Project Fame, I was in Vodafone Icons, I've been in, I, I auditioned for Big Brother Africa, there's not, there's no competition I haven't been to, trust me, you know, but at the end of the day, where was I? Depression, suicidal, I mean, you know, it was terrible, it was hard. So we thank God that he really brought you here to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, and just, just tell us your experience, what happened when you came here? When I came here, I was done i was done i actually believed i had a couple of days to live i'm not even exaggerating i really mean what i'm saying you know so when i came to the synagogue church of all nations i was opportune you know a friend of mine told me about this i didn't know anything about emmanuel tv i didn't know how great it was i didn't know that it would be the thing to change my life i really didn't know but um my friend told me about it so i decided okay we'll come down here and i'll see what it's like when i got here i was opportune to be placed on the prayer line i was prayed for by the wise man when it touched me, I mean, so I felt the Holy Spirit just ascend on me and so many things left my body. I felt free. And when, when I got delivered, I decided, you know, this is a good place to be. I, I shouldn't just rush out of here, but I should, you know, remain here for some time. And it was a good idea because since I've been here, it's been wonderful. My life has changed tremendously. I can honestly say I'm not the same Denise again because... I don't. I've never had the the the, the urge to want to drink. I've never had the urge to want to smoke. I've never had the urge to say I'm I, I, like the spirit of lust is not disturbing me anymore. I've not felt anything like I want to be with a man or I want to be. I just I'm just so focused now. And you know the man of God has really been the father that I never had. You know it's making me very emotional right now because he really helped me to change my life. He really built my spiritual life. 
You know, he taught me the right way to pray. He changed my wardrobe because before, my God, the things I used to wear was not nice at all. You know, but he changed my wardrobe. He took care of my feeding with no strings attached. He gave me a roof, nothing. He didn't want, not like those other men I've met before in my life where they wanted something back. He's just totally been a father. He's truly a man of God, and I really appreciate him for everything that he has done for me especially helping me to build my spiritual life because that's the most important thing my relationship with God I've learned gospel songs I learned that you don't need to be high to to, to have the, the the feeling that you need to sing that passion that you need to sing you know at first I used to think okay you need to smoke before you can um, have courage and all that no you really need God to have courage you really need God to be bold you really need God to understand what where you're coming from and where you're going you know all these alcoholic things and all these these addictions trust me it's all a lie it's all a lie it actually puts you in the realm of make-believe this is reality now i can stand in front of people and i can sing with a clear eye it's it's trust me it's so amazing so before coming here uh just describe your relationship with god or your christian life before coming here to what's happening now okay before coming here i'm not gonna lie I was what I call a church goer, Sunday church goer. So I would continue to sin left and right, left and right, because I believe that when I go to church on Sunday, everything will be over and then I'll have another week to do more sin. But now I really understood that no, you have to stay, you know, you have to stay closer to God. You need him in your life in every aspect. It's not because he says he's a forgiving God means that you should do wrong to him. I believe that now I'm now a true Christian, a real, I'm reading my Bible. I know how to fast. <laughs> I never knew how to fast before. I know how to fast. You know, I just, I just look, I reason different now. I, you know, as, as the man of God says, when you're delivered, things are taken out of you and you it's empty so what you need to do is fill that with the word of god because that's the only way that you can move forward in life the right way so there's no reason why i should say that i should go back to my old life when i have god in my life god is god of second chance he gave me another chance and i really really appreciate him because i could be dead right now well we thank god almighty indeed for giving you another chance and you're you're standing here today as a living testimony to the glory of god and uh, right now, what is uh, what, what steps are you going to take now? Okay, right now I'm going back home to Ghana and I'm going to further my music career, but in a godly way. I'm not going to do all those <laughs> carnal songs that I used to do before, encouraging people to smoke, encouraging people to go to go to um, clubs and everything and basically let the spirit of lust lead them into prostitution and all that. I don't want to, I want to now use my voice to glorify God because he's the one that gave me the voice in the first place, you know, so I need to glorify him. I need to be a living testimony to the people that I know because most people out there, I know that most young ladies, especially like myself out there to know that to serve the Lord is a wonderful thing. And it's actually cool. It's better than what we thought was cool before for which is holding a cigarette cigarettes only give you sicknesses make you look old drinking only curse your liver and you'll just die die soon you know i look so young and fresh now it's just wonderful we really thank god almighty indeed we know you've spent a number of months here in the synagogue church of all nations since your deliverance to develop your spiritual life uh, to be strong spiritually so that you can stand for christ uh, as you're returning to your country of ghana and uh, the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, uh, said that he is really going to support you in every way, uh, physically, spiritually, uh, emotionally, financially, every aspect of your life. Now that you are uh, returning to Ghana to further your career in a godly way uh, in gospel music. And he said that he wants to support you uh, on behalf of himself and Emmanuel TV partners uh, with this gift of 500,000 Naira. So this is a wonderful gift for you from Prophet TV Joshua and Emmanuel TV Partners. Just bring it up. You see what I mean? He's the father I've never had. He's just amazing because, God, I'm, I'm at loss of words. All I can say is thank you so much, Daddy. You're, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Because other people, I, ha I know what I had to do to get money like this before. And you just given this to me to start my career, which is my dream. And thank you for your prayers. Thank you for the love and support. Thank you for the blessings that you've given me. Finally, we'd like to ask you uh, your advice to people watching um, 
you viewers around the world, especially for uh, young people who, like you once were, are seeking to live a life of, of, of filled with worldly things and carnal things, and you're a living example to them. What do you, what do you want to tell uh, those youth and uh, young people out there? It's, it's not all that you think it is. From personal experiences, I thought, you know, when, you, you, when, when you're, you're popular, when people are looking at you all the time for the wrong reasons, it means that you're someone. No, it means that you're nothing. You're just trying too hard in the wrong place because at the end of the day, what really matters is where you're going to end up. You know, you don't want to have everything, as we say, gain the whole world and lose your soul. Just keep strong. Pray, pray. Everyone needs deliverance. When you get delivered, you'll realize that most of your life, if not all, you've been living in darkness because there'll be a veil that'll be lifted from over your head. I see things clear now. Please, drugs, they don't help. Alcohol. It makes you think the wrong way. Before you make up your mind, you've made the wrong decisions. Don't mind what you see on TV, all these videos, because people, people look up to me. People say, oh, Denise, you know, they love me. I'm your fan and all that. But they never knew what I was going through behind closed doors. They never knew I was having nightmares. They never knew I was depressed. They never knew that I was suicidal. You don't want to end up like that. Trust me. I'm not crying because, you know, I'm just crying. I don't want you guys to make the mistakes I made. But thank God that God has given me a second chance. Amen. That's, that's a very wonderful word of advice. And just finally, Deez, you mentioned that these terrible nightmares you were having. How have you been sleeping ever since your deliverance? Like a baby. Oh, my God. I sleep so well now, you know. So imagine you're having sleepless nights. It's just terrible. Now I feel so rested. I don't have bags underneath my eyes anymore. And when I sleep, I, I have great dreams not even good dreams i have dreams about my future i have you know that just put me in the right path I, it's wonderful hallelujah so and finally what what do you think would have been your fates if not god brought you here to the synagogue church for nations oh honestly i, I think i would have been dead i'm not even lying because you know for the amount of times that i've tried to commit suicide wow it's a blessing it's like i was really supposed to come here then you know uh, for the amount of sin that I've put out into the world, if God was not a forgiving God, he's supposed to pay me with death. Like I said, I can't emphasize enough. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for every single thing you've done in my life. And thank you for sending the man of God, Prophet TV Joshua, into my life. Daddy, you're wonderful. You're a father. God bless you so much. Amen. Full of joy in her new life in Christ, Denise makes her way to the vehicle that will take her to the airport where she will fly home to Ghana to start life afresh, this time with Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Hello, hello, my name is Denise. I'm a Ghanaian and I'm a musician from Ghana. I'm on my way back home right now. I thank you so much, Prophet TV Joshua, for everything you've done for me. I'm gonna miss the synagogue family. I can't wait to come back for my testimony. It's gonna be amazing. Thank you, Daddy, for 500,000 Naira that you gave me to start my music career. It's going to be amazing because now I'm going to use my voice to glorify God. I'm just so happy right now. Keep watching Emmanuel TV because I will. Her life now turned around. Denise is about to pursue her dreams. She has discovered the purpose of life is to know life's creator, Jesus Christ, and that true joy comes from loving him. Not only has she received deliverance, but reformation and counseling through filling her heart with God's word. And she has also received the gift of 500,000 Naira to support her in her new life. Truly, broken things become useful in God's hands.